Hello, and welcome to Los Angeles Union Station. Today we are taking Amtrak's Pacific Surfliner down to San Diego. Union Station was built in the 1930s and is the largest passenger terminal in the western United States. It is a total of 14 tracks, 12 for Metrolink and Amtrak trains, and 2 for the Metrorail Gold Line. The station hall is beautiful and truly encapsulates that golden era of rail travel in the U.S., with high ceilings and incredible architecture everywhere. The station serves as the main hub for all Metrolink services except the Inland Empire slash Orange County line as well as Amtrak's Pacific Surfliner, Coast Starlight, Southwest Chief, Sunset Limited, and Texas Eagle. I will be doing a full tour in the coming weeks, where I will give a more in-depth look at the station and its amenities. Tickets for Amtrak trains can be bought either through the designated ticket counter or through the kiosks, like the one shown here. It's an easy process, and it only takes a couple of minutes. I actually chose to buy my tickets from the Amtrak counter so I could get the student discount. All platforms at Union Station are served by a tunnel running under the tracks, so it's a bit of a hike to platform 10B where my train, number 564, is waiting. I wasn't able to get much of the boarding process, as I had my hands full with my ticket and a cup of coffee. But it's a quick scan before hopping on board. Now, I had paid for a coach class ticket, but as I walked upstairs, I saw that this car was configured in what would be considered business class for this route, with extra large seats and tons of legroom. Business class seats on Amtrak offer tons of legroom and are plenty wide, though I can't find any exact numbers on pitch or width. Each seat features a footrest that extends down from the seat in front, which makes the ride just a little bit more comfortable. As far as that seat pitch goes, I have a solid foot or so in front of my knees. As someone on the taller end of the scale, I really appreciate how much space Amtrak offers on this route. The tray tables in business class are rather unconventional, requiring that passengers pull up and then out on the table in order to use it. Behind that table is the seat back pocket, which was holding nothing more than an informational card. All seats on Amtrak offer outlets, however mine wasn't working, which was rather annoying. Business class seats recline quite far, and combined with the footrest, offer a nice place to nap on the way to your destination. Above each seat are reading lights, but no air vents. Oh, and the seat maquettes on Surfliner cars have wave patterns, tying the route into the ocean it runs next to. Each car on the train has plenty of space for medium-sized bags above the seats, and storage for larger bags toward the end of each car. There is also a dot matrix display at the end of each car, but instead of displaying destination information, it only said Amtrak for the duration of the journey. Something else of note is that there is no reserved seating, so board early to get the best seats. As I mentioned earlier, Union Station serves as the major hub for Metrolink trains. I will be taking a ride on Metrolink down to Tustin in the coming weeks, so hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. A few minutes after our scheduled departure time of 7.02am, our train pulls out of the station and begins the three-hour journey down to San Diego. As we pull out of Union Station, let's take a look at some stats about our train. My train this morning is Amtrak Pacific Surfliner number 564 and is driven by Siemens SC44 Charger locomotive number 2122. Each SC44 Charger is powered by a 16-cylinder QSK95 four-stroke engine producing 4,400 horsepower, hence the number 44 in the name. SC44s are rated for a top speed of 125 miles per hour. Although they are limited to 90 miles per hour on this route due to the top speed limitations of Surfliner cars. Here is an example of that top speed. Each 
Each Pacific Surfliner is made up of six Surfliner cars, with the usual consist of two business class cars, one coach cafe car, and three coach cars. Train 564 is operating with three business class and two coach class cars instead of the usual two, three business coach configuration. Time for a walk around the train. Surfliners are bi-level coaches, similar to Amtrak's Superliner coaches used on their long-distance routes, and were built specifically for use in California on San Joaquin and Pacific Surfliner trains. Surfliner cars have two doors per side instead of the one on Superliners. The bottom level of each car has additional seating as well as an accessible toilet. The additional seating is mainly for those with disabilities, with a 2 by one seating arrangement. The accessible seats have plenty of space and have a tray table that extends from the wall in a similar way to those in business class. There are also water dispensers in each car, so it's easy to stay hydrated. The doors in between cars on surf and superliner cars are push-button operated and can be opened using either one's hands or feet. The next car down on the train was a standard coach car, or really what my ticket had paid for. The seat is significantly less luxurious than business class. The armrests are padded, which is nice, and fold up to allow for easy entrance and egress. Sitting down, you immediately notice the difference in legroom between here and business class. I only have a couple of inches between myself and the seat in front. There is a smaller but still functional footrest in each seat, but it doesn't give the support like the larger business class one does. Each seat also has a seat back pocket that is significantly more accessible than in business class, which is a small victory for coach. The tray table folds down from the seat back and looks very similar to what you might find on an aircraft. I would have been satisfied if I was seated here for the duration of the journey, but I'm certainly grateful to be seated in a business class car. Now let's take a look at the downstairs accessible toilet. The door is massive, allowing for easy access to people with disabilities, although it did require a bit of force to close. Overall, the bathroom was very clean, and there's a ton of space to move around for those who need it. There were plenty of tissues and paper towels, and the sink and dryer were both working well. Overall, a very nice bathroom. The cafe is located on the bottom level of the coach cafe car in the middle of the train, just before the business class cars. Usually the tables in the cafe are open, and you can sit and enjoy a drink while watching the scenery go by, but they are all closed due to the pandemic. Hopefully they'll reopen soon. Looking at the cafe itself, it's a small buffet-style selection, with a wide variety of snacks, drinks, and larger food items available at a reasonable price. I opted for a cup of coffee, which came in this nice Amtrak branded cup. If you buy a bunch of snacks, Amtrak provides these cool collapsible boxes to help carry things. Now, the biggest draw of the Pacific Surfliner are the ocean views that this route provides. The railway runs along the coast of California, and in places gets as close as a few yards from the ocean which provides some incredible views of the Pacific. Well, we've got a minute. I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. It's totally free and it really helps support the channel and the content I make. Oh, and hit that bell icon so you never miss another trip report. Thanks.
largest station on the route between LA and San Diego is Oceanside, which serves as the connection between Metrolink and coaster commuter services. I'll be taking coaster back to Oceanside from San Diego on my way back to LA, so hit that subscribe button so you're around for when that video goes live next week. As we reached the edge of Sorrento Valley and the single track line through the mountains, we were informed by the train crew that we had missed our scheduled slot on the line due to FRA testing that had happened earlier in the journey, and thus we had to wait for a northbound coaster train to pass. After the train passed, we made our way through the mountains and it was smooth sailing into San Diego. Our train pulls into San Diego's Santa Fe Depot a couple minutes early and it's time to hop off. Santa Fe Depot serves as the southernmost terminus for both Amtrak Pacific Surfliner and Coaster trains, as well as a stop on San Diego's Green Line Tram. I'll be doing a more in-depth tour of Santa Fe Depot later this week, so stick around for when that comes out. I wasn't able to do this in LA, but it's time to walk the length of the train and see that amazing SC-44 that brought us here. They really are incredible locomotives, with an imposing stature and aggressive design. I really wish that they were a little more on the aerodynamic side, like the SCB-40 used by Brightline, or the ALC-42 that will replace the P-42DC in the coming years. And that concludes today's trip report. Next week I'll be taking a trip on the coaster commuter rail service up to Oceanside on my way back to LA. If you want to be around when more videos get posted, please hit that subscribe button. It's totally free and it really helps support the channel and the content I make. I would love to keep doing this for as long as possible, and your support helps me continue to do so. But anyways, that's all I have for today. Thanks for riding with me, and I'll see you in the next one.